Hello. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. راح نتكلم عن الكرتون الانيميشن توم سوير ساسوكي غابة الأصدقاء بعش نتذكر ساسوكي قلت عنه أنا ساسوكي ولا في هاي ننجا 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 بطلون ما حبوب ننجا 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 من بعد كالمارو كابو مارو وين كابو مارو؟ تعال صدق مو بعلى وقتي انا كنت شوي كبير. توني يا اخوي شو تحبون تشوفون رسوم متحركه؟ من؟ كم؟ من؟ جامبون 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 علوش وكورة علي صوتك قولي بصوت علي جابو <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, within three minutes, we are going to start our talk. We will talk about animation and education and animation and some other beautiful stuff that we will talk about. So please join us in the Innovation Theatre. Three minutes, and the clock is ticking. Men. Two minutes to go. And the clock is ticking. One minute to go. The house is not full yet. I need more people in the house. The Innovation Theater is waiting for you. مسرح الإبداع حياكم عندنا في مسرح الإبداع بنتكلم عن رسوم المتحركة. في عندنا من أفضل الكوادر. القطرية وغير القطرية موجودين معانا نتكلم عن الرسوم المتحركة والانيميشن حياكم معانا عندنا في مسرح الابداع طبعا هاي صوتي خادم هندي تعرفوني خالد سوس is inviting you hashtag and at خالد سوس Thirty minutes to go. Oh, actually, sorry. Thirty seconds to go. Still waiting. Shall we start? Have a seat, please. حياكم تفضلوا عندنا في مسرح الإبداع. I know my voice is so loud. 
وين راشد؟ حياك حياك حياكم عندنا في مسرح الابداع معانا شخصية من أبل اشتغلت في أبل أكثر من عشرين سنة We have someone with us in here had worked in Apple for more than 20 years He would like to share with you his beautiful journey in Apple <laughs> he will give you a small secret about him and Steve Jobs. كلكم تعرفون شخصية تمساح. تمساح معانا بيتكلم عن شخصيته. ذيل التمساحي والاسنان الحلوه الدكتوره هند مفتاح الدكتوره هند مفتاح صاحبه الوجه الضاحك المبتسم تعكس لأطفالنا اليوم والمستقبل مديرة مركز المركز الثقافي للطفولة نبدأ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Ladies and gentlemen Good afternoon I would like to start to host our incredible talkers, speakers, storytellers that are going to tell us about their beautiful journey in animation and how this animation is actually enriching our lives with special values that can educate us and deliver us to a future, a beautiful future. So first I will give the microphone to Mr. Durkan he is used to work with Apple, and now he is with Toon Boom Animation. No. With Toon Boom Animation, everybody is uh, hearing me well. Yes. So I manage uh, their education division, uh, and since you opened up uh, the Apple uh, segment, I'm just brief. I'm all, I won't talk about Apple, but I just want to make that uh, you know I worked there for 22 years, and then I joined uh, Toon Boom always in education. I was fascinated to work with, uh, with teachers in the classrooms who brought all kinds of technologies in the hands. It was all about the kids. Whatever we did, whatever I did, was always thinking about what can we bring in terms of added value to the kids so that they can learn better uh, by using technology in the classroom. Toon Boom, the same thing. Animation today is a great way to learn. You've seen today through the competition how the kids, they've never even seen the software and they were engaged, they wouldn't even let after one hour using the software, they didn't even want, even want to let the computers down. So uh, it's a great way to learn because you're asking the student or the kid to dig deep into his critical thinking. You know, it's a process of pictorially uh, show what you learned in any subject matter, science, math, uh, history, uh, your culture, uh, or, or whatever else. In fact, one of the teams today was a culture-related team uh, to this region. So this is a great way of learning. And this, all those, those competencies we talk about 
we talk about those what we call cross competencies. Those are extremely important. I always say to, to all my students and the kids, if you want to go and get a job today, it's not just about what you have as a certificate. They're going to interview you and they're going to drill down to you and see if you have those critical thinking skills, if you've got you know, cooperating, innovative skills, working in group skills. Those are cross competent skills that you're going to learn through animation. It's a great way of learning for the students and also for adults because it's a great path and we, we, we've got some startups here we are in the in this business it's a great industry it's a multi-billion dollar global industry where adults can go in and start their own businesses and and join companies thank you mr darkan that's beautiful speech animation ومستقبل الصناعة هذه بالملايين. Second story teller. She's a beautiful lady. She left her job two years ago where I met her. She was shaking that time. And now she is a CEO of one of the greatest companies as a startup in Qatar. She signed a beautiful contract one day back with, uh, what's their name? Yes, uh, I signed with Qatar National Library. And you can introduce yourself as? Hi, my name is Diana Dejani, and thank you very much for this intro. <laughs> well, I started EduTechnos, and I'm going to talk a little bit about EduTechnos. Then EduTechnos revolves around the mission of inspiring children to fall in love with Arabic. And we're using the concept of if you, cannot, if you don't know how to ride a bike, you're not going to enjoy riding a bike. So we took that statement and that concept, and we designed over 150 games based on uh, Doha Supreme Education Council. And we have them up and running on the, uh, on the uh, uh, online po uh, portal. And, uh, we made it our mission that we're going to enable these children to master every aspect of the Arabic language. And we provide the reports. It's, it's a full uh, web app, um, not just the games, reports, recommendation. We sent email alerts for the parents. Notice there is uh, the child is weak at this uh, scale, so focus on that. So we are very interactive. We're also launching soon a mobile app to teach children how to read. And obviously, when you design games, you have to. Uh, there's a big element of animation and a big element of graphic design that has to appeal to the child. And uh, we are right now, and today we're going to be pitching for the animation project competition. And basically, uh, we are confident with the, our methodology because everything we do is based on R and D, uh, and our methodology takes the, the prototype, the, the story, the episode. We have a storyboard. We test it. We run it by the educators. We run it by the children, and then before we even roll it out. And most of the time, we go back to the design and keep uh, reiterating in this design before we actually produce something. So this is our relationship, my relationship with animation for today. Thank you. Now. <laughs> I've been called by many names. I've been called Khaled the Dinosaur. But I found a rival. Timsah, <laughs> please introduce yourself. Well, I'm not as a rival. Uh, but uh, Timsah is, a, is what, what it is the Arabic name for a crocodile. And I've been called so because kids used to, to pick on my teeth, like I had longer ones. So I was Timsah, and I wanted this Timsah to grow up to become something else. And I've become a cartoonist. This is the end of it. Uh, so my name is Abdelaziz Youssef, and uh, I am a cartoonist in Araya newspaper currently. Also owner of cartoon, or co-owner of cartoon uh, design the one who has a booth there where everybody draws. Uh, we want to create Qatari cartoons for everyone, for Qataris, to reflect who we are for everybody, and to tell people more about what to appreciate about uh, Qatar and GCC Arabic Muslim uh, cultures. 
Um, unlike many important cartoons, uh, we want to create something that is original um, from the region, talking itself for, to everybody. Uh, this is part of it, um, and our project, uh, you can go and have a look at it, it's uh, an, uh, a traffic awareness campaign that we'll be talking about it through uh, the panel today. And that's called Ransaid. Ransaid, do your part. Ransaid, do your part. Sawulli alayk. Ransaid, and last but not least, okay. Dr. Hind Al Miftah, okay. the person with a smiley face. Uh, the smiley she, face is over there. Yeah, okay. that's the smiley face. Um, Childhood Culture Center. So, where is the Markaz of Thakafi Tufula? Okay, thank you, Khaled. If you Welcome. excuse me, uh, I'm going to read this a question in Arabic for this young lady sitting here in front of me. I'll ask her one question in Arabic. لو عطوك رحت تخيلي أنتي في المدرسة فتحت كتاب المدرسة بتدرسين لو تختارين بين النش الحين تقرين الكتاب وهو طريقة العادية أو قدام شاشة آيباد أو كمبيوتر وتقدرين تستخدمين القلم وترسمين شخصيات وتحلين مسائل المعادلة شنو تختارين؟ if you go to school and they made you to choose between an iPad <laughs> or a book, what you will choose? She's from my jeal, jeal al She chose the, the normal pen and paper over an iPad to learn from. The computer. Oh, she's okay. from the new generation. From jeal al okay? This one, she's from the digital natives. Anyhow, my point is that um, today's generation actually being changed recently over the last few years. Um, we cannot raise and educate our kids and today as we, I mean my generation or your generation, being educated. We are talking today about how do we integrate and utilize effectively and efficiently the animation or in general even turn the, the uh, uh, technology and education, uh, which is being actually a must in today's uh, working environment, not a choice anymore. So having said that as a reality and accepting as a reality, uh, taking the decision of moving our education more forward into the future by integrating the uh, animation or technology, it's been actually, if I take it as a personal or you know, by the decision makers or the planners, it's not more anymore a choice. Rather, it's, it should be a must in today's uh, educational environment. Uh, moreover, it's been also, and I was just sharing this with my colleagues uh, in a few minutes ago, it's been uh, indicated by many research and studies that uh, young people and children, they are more, um, best and most learn uh, by using animation, visual and verbal communication, and even the quality and the quantity uh, of information, the retention itself is even higher within animation and, uh, and uh, digital, and that's why they are called digital uh, natives, where they were born to see the, the, with digital and everywhere surrounding them in their daily life. Back to the Smiley Face Childhood Cultural Center, what we have done there is, uh, because we are not an education center, however, uh, we have been trying so far over, basically, uh, specifically through the last two years, to integrate the animation in our projects and the programs. We have two major pro projects that we've been working very hard on using the animation. We have Maktabati, uh, which is a bookshop in Villagio, where we have the interactive library where kids can go and enjoy the entertainment, uh, sorry, the interactive uh, educational programs. And then we have the mobile library, Al one which is mobile library that keeps moving around the schools and even, you know, to the general, uh, to the public places and uh, 
uh, different uh, locations. Uh, also, we have there the interactive library, we have the puppet show, we have the storyteller. Even within the storyteller corner, we still we are doing our best to use the 3D stories where to get those uh, kids interacting within the stories. We have also um, been using some of the uh, uh, animation in our events, but more specifically, and I've been discussing this so far with my critic, is not using the animation education itself, rather. Uh, teaching the, the animation skills to the kids so that they can be the creator and the developer like Khaled, like Abdulaziz, like many other uh, young promising uh, guys here and there. And in and, and doing so, we had developed some, I wouldn't say a lot of workshops, but unfortunately some workshops to teach those uh, young uh, children aged from 10 to uh, 14 how to develop uh, specific uh, animated movies or cartoon or whatever. We've been doing so good in this, but I wouldn't say we had reached our goal or our aim or even our dream. Uh, we are still working with my partners, with some young uh, guys here in the, from Qatar, uh, to transfer such a dream into reality. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. So, the dreamers of the t today Visioners of the future, <laughs> inshallah. Going to the one who created a beautiful tool, Toon Boom. Talk, talk to us about the beautiful tool that you use it for children and to, to create animation, and how you use that tool for education, and how you use Toon Boom for education. So uh, basically, what we've done is uh, uh, our tools are, are, are on the high end, what we call pro, pro products, are used with all the studios around the world. Anything that you see from Disney in terms of production or TV cartoons, 70 to 80% of them are done with our technology. So what we've done about maybe 10 years ago, we've taken that technology with the same user interface, we brought it down all the way to the school areas, okay? So it's very easy to use, very intuitive. But, you know, when I talk about the tool itself, I always say, you know what, forget about the tool for a minute. It's all about how you're gonna integrate this technology into the classroom. And that's where the difference is. Because our strength is to come in and work with your teachers to how to integrate this into the learning and teaching environments to make it seamless. And by the way, it's not about the teachers either. It's all about the students. It's a student-centric, the same way that we had at Apple. It's a student or a person-centric. It's not an enterprise-centric or a teacher-centric. So we don't have to train any teachers. You know, the teachers become facilitators. All they have to do is to give the concept or the subject matter that they want to be animated, and they let the kids basically go about it. It's very user-friendly, very user-intuitive, and we will work with them in that manner. And if I ask Timsah how he used one of those tools to create Ran Said, which is an educational animation, can you please tell us about that? No, how did I use the tool? It's not... No, not how did you use the tool. It's actually how you use the tool to transform your... Uh, what do you call it? Your okay. creativity to something useful. Now, uh, we wanted to create an awareness. Awareness is some form of education. But since we're using animation, we have to think out of the box. Uh, Ran said is an awareness campaign for traffic. Now, when we think about awareness campaign of the traffic, we always think of that masculine voice that come at the end of the message telling us whatever, whatever to do with an echo at the, at the sound and uh, showing us deadly things and stuff. Uh, Ron said it's not that. Ron لا said, تسرع. الموت أسرع. أسرع. را 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 را. <laughs> Anyways, Ron said it's not that. It's just uh, killing it all and showing you the extreme of everything. Somehow, you know, uh, somehow a happy three friends, a Qatari happy three friends on the street. Like to be, to tell you frankly and in short, we're showing you how do you, how, we're showing the, the targeted audience, the Qataris, how do they drive in the street? So then they look at it from a different angle, 
and then we raise the profile of the problem. They talk about it by themselves and find the solutions by themselves too, using hashtags, telling each other, and then uh, delivering the funny, hopefully, animation to everyone else. So that's the whole idea. That's how we used it, and we want it to be non not traditional and using the Tomb Boom engine. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah. Now, we ask uh, Edu Technos how she used technology as edu in education, using like her special 140 different games. What type of values that's been embedded into, let's go deeper, what type of values that you embedded in your games that will make beautiful little girls and boys to play with it, and then what they will learn from it? Well, first I'm going to start with the 150 games were not all designed and developed all in one shot. Uh, it was First we designed five games as beta, then 20, and then we rolled it out. Uh, when we designed the first five games, it took about two years of research, and a lot of research went on what grab children's attention. How can you educate with a game? You don't want the game to be to to be too animated so that the uh, attention of the child stay, gets distracted from the skill that you're trying to teach or distract the child from what you're trying to teach. And what we found out is actually and what I have been utilizing in the game methodology, the design, which again, it has to go through prototype. We prototype it, we take it to the educators, the children, and we have a number of games that has been tossed even after development because it just did not work. So we test everything. Thing. First, uh, we we understood that. Uh, ch <laughs> First, we understood that uh, children actually interact better, and uh, their attention would be higher if they can relate to the material displayed in front of them. So, if they can relate to it, you you grab their attention. Now, if you give them some time after you introduce the material, give them some time to. To actually to have this uh, information register, that also would work as well. So we took all of that and even much more. But this is the two things that can pop in my head right now. We took all everything that we've learned and we started designing games. And we uh, we have it uh, based on also the Arabic culture and heritage. And then we realized that Arabic is not just for Arabs. There are a lot of Muslims that are not Arabs. So we expanded and uh, our definition, we said, with a kick of diversity. <laughs> so we included the, the avatars, for example. A child would go and choose an avatar. For the child to, uh, to find something, a face, that, a profile picture that they can relate to, we had to, we gave like a lot of pictures for the children and gave it to the graphic designers, our graphic designer in Korea, and they did study the main features and they based, and they produced uh, these faces. And uh, we also expanded that so that it would include other cultures as well, not just the Arabs. So again, everything has to be tested and uh, proof of concept has to be there before we roll it out. So this is where the games were there. The teachers approved and we've been, it's been a learning process. But then what we had is the games and the reports. And there was something missing. And this is when we realized we needed to gamify the platform so that, okay, the child finished playing the game, then what? So we gamified it. After the child played the game, the child can see an avatar moving around uh, the map. They can see uh, a certificate. They can print out a certificate. They can collect stickers. So we gamified the whole process and we made competitions, global competitions, and we uh, were also launching the social graph as well. So we are embedding, and I have also, uh, my son is right over here, Dawood. He's been always uh, very helpful in inputs. Mama, I need a pet for this map. and. Voila, we have to make a pet now. You test it, you run it by other children, you make Definitely, sure. you test it with the end user but in mind. You are the end user, man. <laughs> Thank you, Dawood, for being the end user for your mom. Actually, he was the, uh, the reason this whole thing started. Oh. Yes. He's part of the process. Yes. We start. And because of he's part of the process, <laughs> and who's better to ask about you mentioned something, culture. 
Yes. Who's better to ask about culture than Dr. Hind herself <laughs> to speak about culture and how she tried to embed embedded culture and animation and how to, she's teaching children about culture and animation. Please tell us about that type of experience. Actually, I've been one of her students doing storytelling. Because of that, I have a loud voice. <laughs> um, actually, culture is a very controversial issue that cannot find an answer in a one minute or even one second. Uh, that takes actually different parts of the, the cultural aspects. However, since we are at the CCC just uh, only considering the, the cultural aspects of uh, children, however, taking into account our entity, identity, uh, you know, cultural background in terms of Islam and uh, being locally to, uh, as a Qatari citizen and so on, uh, we've been considering the animation. For example, the first workshop um, we've done that was delivered to, I think, 40 to 45 uh, kids ages, uh, aging from, if I'm not mistaken, from 8, that was the youngest one, from 8 to 14. And what that was about creating uh, a diverse culture. How do they interact? They be, uh, as a Qatari citizen, interact with other diverse culture here in the, in the country, in the local, and in, in, a friendly, in, in, in a friendly environment. And uh, the end product of this workshop was a short uh, movie, five minutes, I guess. If I'm not mistaken again. Uh, however, the, the main concept of the movie was, uh, you know, uh, getting involved with such diverse culture in an open uh, society, uh, and how can they uh, tolerance to the to the other cultures, respect the other cultures, you know, all of these uh, as aspects. The second one was done also in the uh, in the GCC Childhood uh, National Day. Again, was also how to respect. Um, I mean, even though we are the same entity, the GCC. However, we still have some um, differences between Qatar, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and so on. And that was also the second uh, workshop. Again, within the same concept of how uh, sharing different uh, cultures. But going back to your question, how do we integrate the culture itself in animation? It's just exactly as dealing with education itself in animation. Um, it, I mean, we cannot do it by ourselves. By the end of the day, we need a lot of stakeholders to be part of this process, whether they were decision uh, makers, the planners, sociologists, and many stakeholders that were um, where you can find the feedback of each stakeholder and each part by the end of the day and by the end of the project we are really introducing a beautiful you know a product that really uh, will feed the the whole society instead of a specific uh, target or a specific uh, percentage of the society itself oh wow thank you and I believe one of those stakeholders is actually the technology providers and there will come to boom. No, to boom. You. <laughs> to boom. <laughs> no, no, no. Technology providers do it. No, you are you are the one, the expert. So, from an expert point of view, how we can integrate values, culture, into the animation itself. Well. Uh, it's actually the students themselves. The, these are the ones who are going to be integrating it. You know, it's not about content creation. It's uh, and, and give it to the to the youngsters to learn. It's about them creating uh, and expressing. It's a self-expression tools that ultimately we are providing, and they will self-express basically, you know, through a pictorial manner. What their culture is all about what they're learning about other cultures so it's about them creating and not us uh, you know creating the content and give it to them so that's how uh, we'll integrate uh, this. i'm telling you this animation medium is so powerful it's it's limitless uh, in terms of what you could do uh, it, you can go even uh, touch in historical aspects maybe you want to get uh, you, the students, the kids, instead of giving them a book about history of Qatar or, or the region, they'll make the research. You know, remember, you know, whatever to make a story, if there is a piece missing, 
that student is going to go and do the research, open up other books, about, uh, go on the internet maybe, or ask his teacher about, hey, by the way, I, I don't really understand this. Can you explain? And then after his research, by the way, the other aspect I always forget to, uh, to mention is uh, storytelling, uh, it's about writing. So one thing I always say, and they don't believe me, are you kidding me when you say that? Uh, we would, animation will drive writing skills, language skills, because ultimately you're going to have to write a script that you're going to have to explain yes. what the animation has done. And if your composition, whether it's in English or in Arabic, is not very good, well, you know, so we taught animation touches all those aspects. And I believe, Timsah, yeah. Timsah can actually reflect on Ran Said, how he penetrated the Qatari brains, the Qatari minds, the Qatari hearts through his animation to reflect a certain value about traffic and what? Safety. Safety. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, reflecting Qatari culture, whatever. No, uh, in, the, in the beginning of the project, like in the, in the very beginning, we thought of us as young people having a different culture because when we think about Qatari, culture is very stiff, it's not really realistic. We went into our peers, people we belong to, we saw the, the culture from their perspective, how, how do they look at people, how do they look at, uh, let's say, idols, and uh, how do, what do they value from the culture, what they do, do not. Or actually, we saw that since we belong to the, to the culture ourselves. So the very classic uh, portraying of culture was avoided in our uh, animation to become something hip, young, and cool that reflecting the, the, the uh, identity of young people. That's the very first thing. Uh, to have this accomplished, we, we removed all the um, direct messaging because this is a taboo according to the young, hip uh, Qatari culture. We removed uh, all the uh, identity-related things. Like We don't want to look like aliens uh, in the cartoons uh, wearing our white uh, thobes and, and walking in a certain way. No, we are normal people, but wearing different clothes. We, we, we took in consideration so many things that um, foreigner countries don't think of, uh, which is like, we are normal people, we are, we're not really different. And, uh, and that's what we, we, we took care of. We, we have a sense of a humor, we have, the, we have a, a freedom of a speech, we can allow so, so many things. But people don't really see that. Uh, they think that we are uh, preserved and have uh, some certain form that cannot be changed. Stereotyping. Yeah. So, yeah, in short, we, we just try to avoid the stereotype that was uh, ban or, that was, you know, um, put on us uh, from the others and been applied by all the ministries and uh, companies and everybody in the media production. Uh, so we had run set dynamic, uh, drawing a very uh, smile, a very, uh, a very natural smile on everybody's face. Everybody else in the world can understand it with the notice or the emphasis of having uh, traditional Qatari clothes on. Uh, Style-wise, it is uh, unique. It's not, uh, it's not copying someone else. And uh, that went into all the phases of the project, from the character design, the way things move, the way we take the cameras to show what's going on, and uh, all the other details of creating animation. Thank you very much. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much, our storytellers, for your introduction and your stories. Now we turn to our beautiful, great guests. If you have any kind of a question that you would like to ask our great storytellers, please wave your hand, ask me to come near you and to give you the mic 
to speak. So, uh, I mean, we have companies that develop games for kids, educational games for kids, and we have the Childhood Cultural Center in place uh, supporting this. So, uh, what's hindering? What is the main challenge that's really hindering having the uh, the critical mass of content, uh, digital uh, content, that can enrich the lives of our kids from a games perspective, I mean, animated games perspective, and from even uh, uh, you know, a, a normal traditional uh, animation perspective. Because again, when you go to uh, all the children channels, you find very few. Either it's, you know, using the, uh, the, the English, uh, the Arabic uh, translation or doublage, uh, but you cannot find a true uh, animation in, in Arabic. So, I mean, what's hindering this from Dr. Hen's point of view and from Diana's point of view? Thank you. Okay. Uh, personally, and as being also involved in such uh, issues uh, over the last two years, I believe strongly that first of all, we need to make a very clear vision to what are the main, let's say, purpose, objectives, vision and mission, and behind, you know, using animation in education or in culture or whatever the purpose is. Once this is identified, I think we should move to the, to the second step, which is decision making by decision makers at the macro level. I mean, when it comes to education, do we have to integrate the animation as a tool just for the sake of entertainment in the classroom or as a tool for learning a process to create and develop the critical thinking, the problem solving, the, ver the visual and verbal communications among the students, or just for a tool as an entertainment tool um, in the classroom for the sake of having a new, you know, in, um, a classroom environment. This is really need to be done, not by myself, not you know by any uh, one of us. Rather, it should be at the macro level, as a strategic plan, well uh, visioned, well measured, um, in terms even of, of the KPIs and the criteria, and how even it should be done whether it was gradually, whether it is taught by the classroom, or wh whatever. So the, this, 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 the third thing I would also um, argue that uh, should be considered is, you know, animation industry, and maybe my colleague can uh, uh, elaborate more. It's not uh, an easy thing. Secondly, it costs a lot. That's why I believe also uh, we need to allocate resources. When I mean resources, it doesn't mean basically only money, but I mean also by financial and the human resources. When I say human resources in terms of developing, maintaining, following up, evaluation, the creation itself, the sustainable development itself needs a lot of efforts. Otherwise, it will, it will be one shooter product, gone over time, never repeated, and you know, the, the remaining story. Thank you. Wow. Okay, uh, from EduTechno's perspective, this is actually very strong and powerful perspective. And EduTechno's perspective is not as powerful as that, but this is the intake, basically. It takes a village to raise a child, and uh, animation for EduTechno's is a medium that we, uh, and that we actually utilize to get and follow the child, whatever the child is. First, we found the child online, so we got there. Then the children started moving to the mobile, so we are creating the mobile app. Now, we found that there is a, actually a need uh, to complement the offering for the children to connect. They need to see animation, so that's we're moving there. Also, the children would like to interact in physical things, so we're launching a Ramadan program to get the children uh, interacting with the games and uh, competing against each other in real life while playing the games, and that will set the stage for uh, an arcade in the future where children will still play games, collect tickets, get the prizes, but yet learn Arabic. So for Ediotechno's purposes, it's Arabic, and this is where we focus on Arabic, reading Arabic, because we need to build the confidence in this language. We need to build the, uh, they need, the children needs to be confident enough to be authentic when they grow up, and they cannot do that if they don't have the right tools. And if we're going to talk about the challenges, I'm going to just talk about it from entrepreneur 
point of view. Yes, you mentioned the resources, the, uh, the human resources, the talent. Uh, you can't find them easily. And, um, and again, you, we, as entrepreneur, you have to be resourceful no matter what. <laughs> Anything you find, you just grab it and get the most out of it. You can agree with that, huh? Yeah. I feel you, sister. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. So, so basically, after you do that and you get resourceful and everything, and it, at Idiot Technos, we're, another thing that we always uh, are aware to make sure that we do is to be an asset to the community, not just a game and children. And you need to become an asset. One way we realize that we actually can contribute to the community is uh, by uh, training interns. Uh, we had interns, we uh, trained them, and then they actually, by the end of the internship, they were programming, and they were helped uh, Edutechno's uh, programming. Same goes with the animation. And one of them actually wanted, uh, was interested in animation because of the program that you guys launched. And just today, I introduced her to Purple Cedar because they were looking for animators. So we are trying to connect and help uh, people. And the other way that we see Edutechno is helping out in this uh, matter is we have also resources and contacts and uh, any animators outside. We can bring them to help also in the training and everything else so that we empower anybody we can, we can basically and give that uh, knowledge to them and share the knowledge that's thank you yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, it's funny we all said the same almost the same thing by saying there is a huge lack of human resources knowledgeable of animation not only in here in Qatar but actually everywhere in the world even North America today you would you would think that there's a lot of animators outside the studios are dying to find animators. And you would think that logically at the macro level, like you just mentioned, the decision makers would say, hey, if there is a lack of, you know, more demand than supply, why don't we put, you know, uh, more resources to train this? Because there is a huge demand today globally, not only in Qatar. This is a global phenomenon. We, we, we do business in 122 countries around the world, and we're seeing this phenomenon everywhere. There is, more jobs to be filled today than animators are in, available in the market. A story t a storyboarding artists today, they're making huge salaries because storyboarding is very creative and they, the studios can't even find them anywhere, you know? And uh, uh, it's one of the reasons why the industry is a global industry, you know, outsourcing in Japan or in uh, China or India. Uh, they do that, but even with that, there is huge lack of uh, animators. So, you know, I think there is lack of information to the de decision makers. Uh, like, you know, put me in front of any decision makers today if I have the opportunity, and I'll just show them what I, you know, what what can be done to get this uh, this business going. Huge demand out there. Absolutely, it's 222 billion industry dollars around the world. Around the world. 220 billion US dollars around the world, the industry itself. So it is nearly as close as the oil and gas industry or the pharmaceutical industry. If you cover so, it all. Huh? If you cover it all. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you can cover it. Uh, I'm just going to say something also. Uh, sorry. Uh, we only think about once an animation is done, by the way, uh, but, uh, two things actually. You know that animation is not just about doing movies. Eh? We're seeing animation to, uh, today in litigation cases around the world, like the Samsung and Apple case in lit litigation. For the juries, a lot of stuff to explain to them the, the difficult concept was done on an animation. Eh? In the medical area, and you name it. But most importantly, what I want to say is, you know, it's a global multi-billion dollar industry today around the world, and uh, studios can't even uh, supply or, or find any members to, uh, to work for them. So how about creating an animation studios in Qatar with the help of some of the people around? I can see big companies around in here, and they can, like Qatar National Bank, what else, Wazarat al-Ittisal, Oridu, Al Jazeera, some initiatives we wanted from them to create a studio, a combined studio. That, sorry, somebody said something. All right. 
uh, combine the studio that actually they can train, educate, and create jobs. If they create small companies, they can create jobs. And we can help. And Tomboom can help. And Cartoon. Cartoon can help. We can help too. There you go. And you can help. And Dr. Hind can help by herself, and so there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Another question? Another question? No. no other questions? No. So they said it all? Oh, there is a question. Sorry. I didn't have eyes in the back of my head. Actually, you need to draw me an eye there. Timsah. <laughs> You need to draw me an eye in the back of my head so I can see other people. Yeah. You have a whole team to do it for you. Hey, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm from uh, um, the ministry, from ICT governance. And uh, my question is, what kind of policy implementations do you expect from a government to help actually your industry? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Somebody from the ministry talked. That's when you've been here. Well, what we're seeing elsewhere, I'm sorry. What, what, what we're seeing elsewhere, actually, governments, uh, and I've seen this in a lot of uh, states or in, in countries like India, let's say, is an example, by the way. You, you know that India, uh, uh, and I'm not joking when I'm going to say this, uh, the, the industry, animation industry, was zero dollars 14 years ago. And our president was one of the, she, in fact, she has a, a lifelong uh, award uh, from the government uh, down there to open up that industry. Today, it employs thousands of employees in India today. It was 14 years ago exactly, was zero dollars in India, okay? So I think what, one of the things a lot of uh, governments they do is that they start to bridge the gap by doing what we call uh, uh, adult uh, uh, adult education courses, so they would pay for some of the adults who are ready basically to retrain themselves and get into this industry. But I am saying one thing, is that the best and, and most effective and cost effective way to do this, because that costs a lot of money, to bring an adult, uh, you know, uh, uh, an adult of 22, 25 years and retrain him, it costs a lot of money. So the best and most efficient way is to get it through the schools. A lot, you know, everybody's fixated and we think that all our kids are gonna be doctors and engineers. And guess what? They're not gonna be doctors and engineers, all of them. And some of them are very creative, but the point is that they're not exposed to any technology in the schools, you know? So I'm saying if we can expose the kids and even in a small percentage of them at the age of 16, 15, they say, hey, this is an area, maybe I want to get into it when I get a little bit of adult. You're going to have in maybe five, six, eight years, a flood of youngsters going into this market and be entrepreneurs like him or, or, or some other stuff. That's, that's the magic. Wow. So remember, we have two hemispheres in our brains, the right side and the left side. We can use both of them. One of them for creativity, and the other one for logic and math. So. <laughs> Can I just comment on the question of the policy making? Um, honestly, I will answer this question, and a very simple answer is that the policy impl implication for such initiative, uh, I wish, I would say a wish because it is a wish, uh, to be led by an executive, uh, director or a CEO who have the faith in such human capital investment and the value, uh, the long term value of such a project uh, to the community, to the industry, to the economy of our country. Um, such executive director or CEO who would really take the initiative in leading and the transferring such an idea that is thrown only here in the panel. Um, from just an idea into a reality through a real project plan. Uh, and I really, again, I wish that one of those big names here, Q&B or Udo or any other big names with open balance uh, budget, I'm sorry for saying that, but this is the reality, yeah. that would really take such initiative and um, 
would uh, come to announce tomorrow, which is the last day, to announce the launchment of uh, the studio or whatever it's called, just exactly the way how did we do it with the incubation center, with the Qatar, Price, uh, sorry, Qatar Enterprise uh, company and so on. It was just an idea. It was just all of these two projects were just an idea. How do we develop our human capital? And because it was really uh, taken seriously and considered as um, the kind and the value of its value to the community, it were taken later into a serious project and being a reality. And this is what we wish, and I believe some of you are still having the same wish to me. Actually, I have the whole project plan. It's ready with me. I've been working on it for the past two years. So if anyone would like to have it, any CEO, QMB, Oridu, you know, any of those special outreach programs or Vodafone, who else? And bidder, who will bid for it? <laughs> the study is there and the numbers are there. So anyone would like to have it, he can hire us and we can come as a whole team sitting in here and we can help to build this industry in Qatar, and then we can spread it around the GCC, then the MENA region, then around the world. Anyone? We will be waiting. <laughs> Any other question? This is a serious thing, I'm not joking. I, we, I have it. And the team is already here saying that they will help in it as well, to implement it. Having the study is something, and implementing it is something else. Any other question? Um, I'm interested to know, uh, do you think animations will uh, replace books in the future? Will they take over the classroom? Or will there be something that's an addition to books in the form of cartoons and games? Or, will, or is it ready to completely take it over? That's a very brave question. For all of us. Who will answer? Well, I can, I can take a stab at it. Uh, it's an excellent question, actually. Uh, the answer is both. In other words, and the, both serve different purposes. Once we, you know, what we say elementary and middle schools, the concept is not to teach the animation per se, but animation becomes a tool into the learning subject matters that you, you're being taught. So the message is that, that to, to the school or the teachers, I don't want you to do any change of what you're doing today. The teachers send the kids anyways to project-based learning, you know? So continue to do that instead of sending them to, uh, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, uh, uh, extracurricular activities, it will be an animation. On the high schools, that's where you come in and we have what we call a CTE track, a career technical education. And the message is that the tool becomes learning to learn the tool. It doesn't become a tool to learn other subject matters. There are two things. And yes, those are the kids at around 15, 16, 17 years old. We expose them a little bit deeper with more uh, featured products. And the, you know, the idea is for them to really to learn the tool so that eventually we'll create more of these guys, the creative guys, because the market needs it. So the answer is two. One, to be a tool in learning subject matter. The other one, I want to teach you the tool because you might be interested in pursuing that as a career. I would like to add that now there is also, it's not new, the concept of blended learning or integrated learning where you actually blend with the books. You've seen Dr. Hint ask the little girl, she says she preferred the book and the pen, the other one the iPad. So as part of education and teaching, you have to keep rotating and engaging the children with different tools. And only children will decide whether the book will be retired or not. And so far, no, we still have hope for the book. Um, from my point of view, uh, I find animation is another aspect of getting knowledge. So it is just a way to get you whatever you need to know. But to be an intelligent, to have a, a better knowledge about everything, you cannot substitute or avoid a way of getting knowledge or learning. Uh, to have the 360 degrees, you have to have a look at what's going on on each 
uh, medium of learning. That's a point of view only. Actually, you had left nothing for me to say, but um, again, just to conclude, um, animation is just a tool uh, for education, but it's not education itself. And, and that's why books will remain as the main source of education. Uh, and it's exactly, I'm referring back to the example I've been um, uh, doing it early this uh, panel when I asked the little girl, do you prefer reading from a book or using an iPad? Two of them, they said they prefer the book, while only one, she said, she's a preferring. So book will still the main source, while animation is only a tool, just only for the effectiveness and ensuring the efficiency of the learning process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful panel. Any other question? Any other question? One? Any other question we go to? I think we'll be sold out, guys. <laughs> Any other question? Three. We've been sold out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the Thank panel, for much. being in here with us today. Thank you very much, our beautiful, great guest being with us today in the Innovation Theatre. And thank you, our host. Okay, I have to say just one last thing. Dawood is going to kill me if I don't say it. He is the main debugger for the games. I give it to him, he debugs it. Halal. Thank you, Dawood. You are the great debugger. <laughs>